Hello, my name is Jenna Nichols. Uh, we're going to talk about today's structure 1.3.3. We're going to look at uh, atoms that are larger than hydrogen and have uh, more electrons you know, and look at how that relates to energy levels. So let's review Bohr models really quick. You have your protons, neutrons, and the nucleus, and then your energy levels around the outside there. The lowest energy level is uh, n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3. You get higher energy levels as you go further away from the nucleus. Um, and an electron would have to gain energy to move further away. The um, electron would have to release energy to move back down. Um, and it will gain or lose uh, discrete amounts of energy that we called quanta. Uh, and that's in the form of a photon, so a discrete unit of light energy. It's called a photon, and depending on the amount of energy is how many energy levels it will jump up, and the energy of the photon released is dependent on how many energy levels it falls down. Um, make sure that you know that the lowest energy configuration is called the ground state, and when it jumps up to higher energy levels, that we call the excited state. Now, um, the number of electrons that can fit in a given energy level is given by the equation uh, 2n squared. So if when you have n equals 1, we can fit two electrons at that space, because 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. When you're at the second energy level, you can fit eight electrons. When you're at the third energy level, you can fit 18 electrons. And when you're at the fourth energy level, you can fit 32 electrons. Now we will look how these are organized into individual um, orbitals and sublevels in a bit later section. Uh, but for now, you just need to know the number of electrons possible for a given energy level. Um, and essentially, when you have more than just one electron transitioning, like hydrogen just has that one electron. And we looked at the specific, like, transitions for that one electron in hydrogen re relating to specific lines on the atomic emission spectra. When you have more than one electron, it becomes a lot more complicated because you might have, you know, one electron doing one thing and a different electron doing another thing, and you might have more than two electrons, so it becomes very involved. Um, so you only need to know the um, very specific transitions for hydrogen that was in section two. Um, and just kind of have a general idea that the more electrons that we have, the more complicated the atomic emission spectra will be. Okay, so let's talk about um, valence electrons. So let's pull out a couple of um, examples. I'll we'll look at hydrogen, of course. Let's look at, um, we'll do lithium, we'll do carbon, We'll do sodium, and we'll look at, um, let's do sulfur, okay? So hydrogen has one proton, one electron, and so in the ground state, that hydrogen, one electron will be in the first energy level, and we would draw a Bohr model kind of like that. And so we define valence as the number of electrons, or the, the specific electrons that are in the outermost energy level for that atom. So hydrogen has one valence electron um, in the first energy level. Its first energy level is its valence shell. Lithium has three total electrons. So the lithium Bohr model would have two electrons in its first level, but that's all that the first energy level can fit is two electrons. To fit the third electron, it has to go into a higher energy level. So lithium's three electrons are organized like that, and its outermost shell is the second energy level, n equals two. There's only one electron in that valence shell, so it has one valence electron. Carbon has six electrons, so it can fit two electrons in its first energy level, and then the other four have to go in the second energy level. So carbon's valence shell is also n equals two, but it has four valence electrons. 
Now for sodium, sodium has 11 electrons. So it will have 11 protons and then the first two electrons can fit in the first energy level. The second energy level can hold up to eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But that's only 10 total electrons. We need one more to get sodium. So it's 11th electron will need to go into the third energy level. So sodium's valence shell is the third energy level and it has one valence electron. Now, um, notice how hydrogen has one valence electron, lithium has one valence electron, and sodium has one valence electron. If you look at a periodic table, uh, you'll see hydrogen, lithium, and sodium in order in that first group. Um, and that kind of gives you a preview into some of our periodic properties, all of the um, elements that are in that first group will have one valence electron. Now let's look at one more example. Let's look at sulfur. Sulfur has 16 electrons. So um, I'll draw it over here so we can see it a little better. There's 16 protons. There's one, two in the first energy level. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now we're at 10 total electrons. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 for sulfur. So sulfur's valence shell is that third energy level and it has six valence electrons. Okay, so let's look at a couple examples. How many valence electrons are in a ground state atom of carbon? Easiest way to go about that is to draw a Bohr model. One, two, three, four, five, six, because carbon has six electrons. So there are four valence electrons. And then it says, which energy level are they located in? They're located in the second energy level, the valence shell for carbon. Let's do one more for aluminum. Aluminum has 13 electrons. So two can fit in the first level. Eight can fit in the second energy level. So that's 10 total. I need three more to get to the 13. So uh, aluminum has three valence electrons and they are located in the third energy level, which is the valence shell for aluminum. Okay, how does an element's main energy level relate to its periodic, I'm sorry, to its period number in the periodic table? Um, so let's go back to uh, hydrogen, lithium, and sodium that we talked about earlier. Hydrogen has one electron, lithium has three electrons, and sodium has 11. They all have one valence electron, one electron in the outermost level, one electron in the outermost, one electron in the outermost, but hydrogens is in the first energy level, lithium is in the second energy level, and sodium is in the third energy level. Now if you uh, find these elements on the periodic table, hydrogen, lithium, sodium, this, hydrogen is in the first period, and its valence electrons are in the first energy level. Lithium is in the second period, its valence electrons are in the second energy level, and sodium is in the third period, and its valence electrons are in the third energy level. And so that's how the period number relates to the highest energy level where their electrons, their valence electrons are located.